نحمد و نسلی علی رسول الکریم اعوذ باللہ من الشیطان الرجیم بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم رب شرح لی صدری و یسر لی امری و احلل اقدتم من لسانی یفقہ قولی و جعل لی وزیر من اخلی اللہم فکہنا فی الدین رب زدنی علما اللہم انی اسألکا علما نافیا رزقا طویبا و عملا متقبلا آمین سم آمین السلام علیکم ورحمت اللہ وبرکاتہ سورہ القیامہ This surah was revealed in Makkah. It has 40 verses, two stanzas, 75th by the order of arrangement and 31st by the order of revolution. It gets its name after the word Al-Qayama in the first verse. And regarding the period of revolution, there are no traditions to indicate the exact period of revolution. But uh, the substance and the subject matter of the surah definitely points that it was a surah which was uh, revealed in the starting period of the prophethood of Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Like uh, in the verse number 15, Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala has mentioned and ordered Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam saying that do not move your tongue to remember these revelations hastily. It is our responsibility to have it remembered and read. Therefore, when we are reciting it, listen to its recital carefully. Again, it is our responsibility to explain its meanings. So this was like in the initial part when Hazrat Ibrahim used to bring the revolutions to Prophet Sallallahu And he was not well versed with the language and he was not well acquainted with the language of the verses. So uh, feeling upset and anxious about the fact that uh, fearing the fact that he might forget any one of the few words, he used to start repeating it in haste quickly to trying to memorize it. And this was what? This was a manner of Prophet of him, him being as-sadiq al-amin, that he was the truthful and he was the trustworthy. So when the uh, messages and when the verses of Quran were revealed to him, he being the truthful wanted to with, convey them to the people with complete truth, not not forgetting or not concealing any one of the true words of the true book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And he was the trustworthy. So once he was being entrusted with the messages, with the commandments, with the teachings of Quran, words of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala was uh, he being entrusted with, then he wanted to be as a trustworthy. He wanted to ensure that the complete message be uh, conveyed to people. So that is why in haste, he started repeating the words, trying to memorize it. And there Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the beginning of uh, phase of the relations of Quran instructed him that he will be made to memorize all these things. And then they will also be explained to him. So we learn the manner of Prophet Sallallahu again, his love with Allah, intensity of his love with Allah, the strength of his bond with Allah, the desire, the intense desire to learn the book of Allah and Quran, and the intense desire to memorize the message and verses of Quran, and the intense and severe desire to remember the complete message and commandments and orders of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and his quality of being sensitive about being trustworthy and truly convey the complete message of Quran to the people. Are we also mindful? Are we also so sensitive about all the things? All what has reached to us, are we so meticulous and are we so careful and mindful of conveying all that? The true words full with full trust to all those around ourselves. And then what we learn, another thing we learn from here is that in these verses where Allah has said that we will explain the meaning to you was he was reassured. And this also refers to the fact that the verses of Quran were just not revealed. They were also explained to Prophet Sallallahu by Hazrat Jibreel in words of Allah. And this is also what to what I've already talked about, that the revelations which came to Prophet Sallallahu were of two types. One, that were revealed. And these were the recited verses of Quran, which Prophet Sallallahu recited to his companions, taught them, explained them, and then they wrote them down and or some of them memorized them also. But then there were other verses when a verse was revealed, 
Hazrat Ibrahim would explain the meaning of that verse. The com order, uh, the commandment of uh, that commandment of Allah was explained as to what Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala meant and what it implied on and what it enjoined upon. So this explanation well, has not been uh, has not been sent to us in form of the verses of Quran. That is the revealed verses. No, it has been conveyed to us as convealed revelation. These are the non recited revelations of Allah which have reached us by the words of Prophet ﷺ, that is the traditions and ahadith of Prophet ﷺ, or by the deeds and the actions and the manners, that is the sunnah of Prophet ﷺ. So I repeat again today that the source of hadith and the source of sunnah is what? Explanations by Hazrat Jibreel salam with the words of Allah. And so it is what the source of Hadith and Sunnah is Wahi. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has taken the charge of protection of Wahi. So that is why verses of Quran, the traditions of Hadith, and the manners of Sunnah, they are all protected. And we need to follow all these uh, closing our eyes without getting any upset, uh, without getting upset of uh, their being true or their being false. Now, Zubillah, they are all true, they are all protected, and they are all saved. So this is, I chose that this, uh, these verses, because they were mentioned here, they were also, uh, these, uh, the surah was revealed in the initial part of the prophethood of Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, and similar, similar instructions to Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam have also been given in Surah Taha, verse number 114, where Allah said that, um, see that you do not, hasten to recite the Quran before its revolution and it is completed to you. Similarly, in Surah Al-Ala, verse number six, Allah has reassured that we shall enable you to recite them and you shall never forget them. So similar to those verses, these verses of Surah Al-Qayama, they have been uh, revealed in the starting period of Makkah. Regarding the theme and the main subject of the Surah, uh, Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam in the initial few verses has been given instructions as we've already talked about and in the later verses uh, Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala in these verses has invited towards faith in hereafter and has explained and related uh, some of the scenes of the day of judgment. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim La uqsimu bi yawmil qiyamati ولا أقسم بالنفس اللوامة يحسب الإنسان أن نجمع عزامه بل قادرين على أن نصب بنانه I swear by the day of resurrection. So Allah has sworn directly by the day of resurrection. And I swear by the reproaching soul to the certainty of resurrection. So Allah swears by the day of resurrection itself and by nafsin lavama to make sure of the certainty of the day of resurrection. Allah mentions here nafsi, nafsin lavama. The nafs, the human self, has been explained to be of three types. Number one is nafsi amara. This is the one, the self that urges the man to commit evil and to commit sins and to lead a sinful and an evil life. The second is nafse lavama, as has been mentioned in this second verse. Nafse lavama is the self that feels repentant which feels repented at doing something wrong, thinking wrong, willing or desiring something which is sinful and reproaches man. And the, the self which reproaches man for the sinful thought or the sinful deed or act. And this is same which is called as conscious in the modern terminology. And the third is the nafsi mutma'inna. This nafsi mutma'inna is the self which is satisfied, satisfied at following the right path and abandoning the wrong path, satisfied at the orders of Allah, at the commandments of Allah, satisfied at the will of Allah, at the trials of Allah, the self which is satisfied and is stayed content is the nafsi mutma'inna. This nafsi mutma'inna is the desired self for a believer, for a person of faith. And this is the desired self for which Allah has clearly announced in the verse of Quran. Ya ayyatuhan nafsul mutma'inna. 
irji ila rabbiki radiyatan marziya that o oh, your contented o oh, you o oh, you satisfied soul you return towards your lord he is happy with you and you be happy with him so this is a glad tiding for the person having which nafsi mutmainna allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us with this does man think that we will not assemble his bones yes we are able even to proportion his fingertips but man desires to continue in sin he asks when is the day of resurrection so when vision is dazzled and the moon darkens and the sun and the moon are joined man will say on that day where is the place of escape no there is no refuge to your lord that day is the place of permanence man will be informed that day of what he sent ahead and kept back rather man against himself will be a witness even if he presents his excuses move not your tongue with it o muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam to hasten with recitation of quran indeed upon us is its collection in your heart and to make possible its recitation so when we have recited it through jibril alaihi salam then follow its, its recitation then upon us is its clarification to you no but you love the immediate and leave the here after some faces that day will be radiant which faces on the day of judgment will be radiant allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in verse 23 they will be looking at their lord and some faces that day will be contorted expecting that there will be done to them something back breaking verse number 22 and 23 is giving a beautiful glad tidings to all the inmates of jannah and all the believers and all the righteous and the pious and this good news is that all the all the righteous and the pious inmates of jannah they will be doing what as has been reported in a tradition in bukhari that prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said you will openly see your lord and this is exactly what the verse is inferring to all of us also how will we see and how will all the inmates of jannah see their lord themselves hazrat abu said qudri radiyallahu ta'ala anhu and hazrat abu huraira radiyallahu ta'ala anhu they have reported that prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam was asked by his companions that oh messenger of allah shall we see our lord on the day of resurrection like they were surprised and so they asked shall we see our lord on the day of resurrection and prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam very simply replied do you find any difficulty in seeing the sun or the moon when there is no cloud cloud in between they said that they did not and holy prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said likewise you will see your lord on the day of resurrection and then it has been reported it has been reported by hazrat shuaib the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said that when the righteous people will enter the jannah allah will ask them do you want that i should bless you with something more they will answer have you not made our faces bright have you not admitted us into paradise and saved us from hell thereupon allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will remove the curtain and none of the blessings that they had been blessed until then will be dearer to them than that they should be blessed with the vision of their lord the vision of the lord the creator the sustainer the rahman the rahim rab will be blessed to all those who will be the inmates of jannah and this will be the dearest blessing for all of them it has been reported by hazrat abdullah bin umar radiyallahu ta'ala anhu in a tradition that prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said that man of the lowest rank among the dwellers of paradise will see the vastness of his kingdom upon a distance covered to 2000 years and the people of the highest rank among them will see the lord twice daily and then prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam recited this verse that on the day some faces shall be fresh and they will be looking towards the lord and the tradition ibn majah reports from hazrat jabe bin abdullah radiyallahu ta'ala anhu that prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said that allah will look down towards them 
and they will look towards Allah. And then Allah, uncle will hide himself from them and they will not pay attention to any other blessings of paradise and will continue to look towards their Lord. So this is, this is the reward. This will be one of the best rewards for the people of Jannah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, let none of us be deprived of this, the greatest attainment on the day of judgment. No, when the soul has reached the collarbone and it is said, who will cure him? And the dying one is certainly that is in the time of separation and the, and the leg wound about the leg and your, le and your Lord that day will be the procession and the disbelievers had not believed, nor had he prayed. Prayer, 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 offering salah has been repeatedly mentioned in the last verses of the Quran. For, for entering into Jannah and to save ourselves from hellfire. Rabbi ja'alni maqima salati wa min suriyati. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us all, our successors, our offsprings, help us all establish salah. But instead, he denied and turned away. And then he went to his people, swaggering in pride. Woe to you, and then, and woe, and then woe to you, and woe. Does man think that he will be left neglected? Had he not been a sperm from the semen emitted? And then he was a clinging clot. And Allah created his form and proportioned him and made him of two mates, the male and, ma and the female. Is not that the creator able to give life to the dead? This is the answer which Prophet Sallallahu had taught all the companions when they recited this last 40th verse of Surah Al-Qiyamah. He would sometimes respond by saying, Bala, it means what? Why not? And sometimes he used to say, Subhanakallahumma fabala, glorified are you, O Lord, why not? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us learn and remember all the manners and the sunnah of Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and adopt all the sunnahs of Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam finally to the minutest of perfection in our lives. Surah al-Insan, Surah al-Dahar. The surah was revealed in Mecca, having 31 verses, two stanzas, 76 by the order of arrangement and 98 by the order of revolution. It is known as Surah Ad-Dahar because of the word of Ad-Dahar in the very first verse and is also known as Surah Al-Insan. Both these words coming in the first verse. Now, regarding the period of revolution, it is regarded as a surah which was revealed in the starting period of Mecca and uh, 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 there are people who consider that it was revealed during the earliest period of Mecca, but some verses have been revealed immediately after Surah Al Mudassir also. Regarding the main theme and the subject matter of Surah Al Mudassir is to inform the man of his true position in the world and to tell him that if he understood his true position rightly and adopted the attitude of gratefulness, he would meet with such and such good end. And if he adopted, on the contrary, the way of disbelief, then he would meet with such and such evil fate. First of all, all men had been reminded that there was a time when he was nothing, Lam yakum min, lam yakum shaya, that he was nothing. And then there was a humble beginning of him was made with a mixed drop of semen and the oven, and uh, which even the mother was not aware of. And after that, the man has been warned. So as to say the beginning of your creation was this way. And then Allah developed you and Allah shaped you into what you are today. So you need to do what? Realize that this world which you have been sent after all that intricate, complicated, perfected creation, you need to realize that this world is a period of trial and the trial is to test that who stays obedient and who is disobedient. Then in verses number 5 to 22, continuously the blessings with which those who do full justice 
by uh, by making them serve humanity and serve the religion of Allah, how they will be favored. And uh, in the second section, Prophet Sallallahu has been also addressed, um, asking him to stay steadfast and asking him to continue his mission endlessly and perseverantly. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. هل آتا على الإنسان حين من الدهر لم يكن شيئا مذكورا Has there not come upon man a period of time when he was not a thing even mentioned that there has been a past time on the human being when he was not even a mentionable being a mentionable creature this this message does what the worst the message of this verse does what it takes out all forms of pride vanity and any form of arrogance from the hearts of the reciters of Quran and instills and infuses and inspires humbleness in the bondsman Allahumma ja'alni saburan wa ja'alni shakura wa ja'alni fi aini saghira wa fi a'yunin nasi kabira. Indeed, we created man from a sperm drop mixture that we may try him. We made him hearing and seeing. So Allah says that you were created for a trial. And before trial, you were blessed with hearing and seeing so that you could you could see and you could read the verses of quran and the messages of allah and you could hear and listen to the teachings of quran and hadith to understand how you have to spend this life in a state of trial to please allah with what ahsanu amala indeed we guided him to the way he be he grateful or be he ungrateful Indeed, we have prepared for the disbelievers chains and shackles and a blaze. Allahumma ajirna min nar Indeed, the righteous, the righteous will drink from a cup of wine whose mixture is of kafur, mixed flavored, tinted drinks of Jannah, a spring of which the righteous servants of Allah will drink. They will make it gush forth in force and abundance. And they, they are those who fulfilled their vows and feared a day whose evils will be well widespread and they gave food in spite of love for it to the needy the orphan and the captives saying we feed you only for the countenance of Allah we wish not from you reward or gratitude indeed we fare from our Lord a day austere and distressful so Allah will protect them from the evils of that day and give them radiance and happiness and will reward them for what they patiently endured with a garden in paradise and silk garments they will be reclining therein on adorned couches they will not see there in any burning sun or freezing cold and near above them are its shades and its fruits to be picked will be lowered in compliance and there will be circulated among them vessels of silver and cups have been created clear as glass clear glasses made from silver of which they have been of which they have determined the Mayers, and they will be given to drink a cup of wine whose mixture is of ginger from a fountain within paradise whose name is Sal Sabil. To what perfection and to what minutest of details does Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala explain Jannah? And still, Prophet says, Jannah, a place which no eye has seen, no ear has heard, and no heart can. Now, no heart has felt. Remember, receiving all these verses from the Quran and going through all these scenes of Quran, despite all that, we cannot, we cannot in the wildest of dreams comprehend, comprehend the blessings and bounties of Jannah. They will circulate among them, young boys made eternal. When you see them, you will think them as beautiful scattered pearls. And you, when you look there, there in paradise, you will see pleasure and a great dominion. Upon the inhabitants will be green garments of fine silk and brocade, and they will be adorned with bracelets of silver, and the Lord will give them a purifying drink, and it will be said, indeed, this is for you a reward. Your efforts has been appreciated. 
Allahumma inni as'alukal jannatul firdaus rabbibni li'indaka baitan fil jannah. Indeed, it is we who have sent down to you the Quran progressively. So be patient for the decision of your Lord and do not obey from among them a sinner or an ungrateful disbeliever and mention the name of your Lord in prayer morning and evening and during the night prostrate to him and exalt him a long part of the night indeed these disbelievers they love the immediate what this worldly life and leave behind them a grave day which day the day of judgment we have created them and strengthened their forms and when we will we can change we can change their likenesses with complete alteration. Indeed, this is a reminder. So he who will, who wills, make make uh, may take to his Lord away. Allahumma ihtina sirat al mustaqim, and you do not will except that Allah wills. Indeed, Allah is ever knowing and wise. He admits whom he wills into his mercy, but the wrongdoers, he has prepared for them a painful punishment. Surah Al-Mursalat. Surah revealed in Makkah, having 50 verses, two stanzas, and 77th by the order of arrangement, and 33rd by the order of revolution. The surah takes its name from the starting word in the first verse, wal mursalat, where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has uh, sworn by the winds. And the period of revolution is that the subject uh, matter itself bears the full evidence that it was revealed in one of the earliest parts of uh, the life of Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And uh, uh, surahs preceding it was surah Qiyamah and surah Dahar. And the two surahs following its revelation was surah Naba and surah an -Naziyat. So this was the chronological order of revelation which we learn from the traditions. And regarding the theme and the subject matter, its theme is to affirm the resurrection and hereafter, and to warn the people of the consequences which will ultimately follow the denial and the affirmation of these truths. In the first seven verses, uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala shows the system of winds. They have been presented as an evidence of the truth of resurrection. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala shows the behavior and the manner and the activities of the wind for us as a precedence and the role model also. And uh, the people of Mecca were repeatedly asking Prophet Sallallahu to bring about the resurrection. So in verses 8 to 15, their demand has been answered. And uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has told them clearly that resurrection is no sport. It's no sport, it's no fun, so that whenever a jester should ask for it, it should be brought about immediately. It is indeed a day of judgment. It will settle the accounts of all the mankinds and of all the individuals. And for it, Allah has fixed a specific time. It will take place at its own time. And when it takes place, then it will come with all its dreads and horrors. So it is like a warning signal to all of them. And then in verses number 16 to 28, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala goes on continuous uh, explanation of why the, there is necessity of the day of uh, resurrection and hereafter. And uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala here has mentioned in verse number 28 to 40, the fate of deniers of hereafter and 41 to 45, Allah explains the rewards of those affirming in the faith and how they will, um, of all those who are endeavoring to improve their fate and hereafter will be rewarded on the day of judgment. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Wal mursalati urfan, fal asifati aswan, fal asifati aswan, wal nashirati nashran, fal fariqati farqan, fal mulqiyati dhikran, uzran aw nuzran, by those winds sent forth in gusts, and the winds that blow <coughs> and the winds that blow violently, and by the winds that spread clouds, and those angels who bring criterion, and those angels who deliver a message as justification or warning. Indeed, what you are promised is to occur. 
when will this occur when the stars are obliterated so now in these first few verses allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has sworn by the winds to prove what in nama tu adu now lawake that the day of judgment which you are being repeatedly over and over again you are in these verses of quran you are being repeatedly promised and you are being repeatedly warned of that day will definitely occur so allah has sworn to prove the truth of this truth of the universe and then at the same time allah subhanahu wa ta'ala also explains the activities of the winds that how the winds and the clouds together they uh, separately and they unitedly also both of them they do and they work to clean up and to purify and to freshen up the environment so it is a message for all of us that you need to take up this role also and you need to act and behave in the manner of the winds and the clouds together or separately and clean up and purify your community your clan your tribe your family yourselves from what from the filth and from the dirt of the sins of the evil doings of the wicked plans and you should you should spread about and you should spread about the scent of the teachings of quran and you should infuse the messages of hadith like all what this uh, these uh, the tasks which are taken up by the wind and the clouds all the believer muslim women and the muslim uh, uh, men they are being instructed to adopt the similar behavior which is liked by allah because winds is a creation of allah for which he swears so here we've been taught how to teach and how to preach quran and why do we need to do this because there is a promised day and we need to go about spreading the teachings and preachings of quran like the winds and the clouds because we need to save the bondsmen and we need to save all those around us the near and dear ones around us from the day which has been promised the day of resurrections and when will this day of resurrection occur and what will happen so when the stars are obliterated and when the heaven is opened and when the mountains are blown away and when the messenger's time has come for what day was it postponed for the day of judgment and what can make you know what is the day of judgment wo that day to the deniers did we not destroy the former people then we will then we will follow them with the later ones thus we do we deal with the criminals oh that day to the deniers did we not create you from a liquid disdain and we placed you in a firm lodging where after conception in the womb of the mother for a known extent that is what the duration of pregnancy before labor and we determined it and excellent are we to determine oh that day is to whom the deniers the deniers who deny to accept the oneness of allah the attributes the power the authority the control the sovereignty of allah those who deny to obey establishing of salah those who deny to pay the zakat those who deny to fast in the month of ramadan and established all the pillars of islam those who deny those who deny to be mindful of the rights of the bondsmen of allah those who deny to obey to obey the commandments of allah those who deny to surrender to surrender to almighty allah have we not made the earth a container of the living and the dead and we place there in lofty firmly set mountains and have given you to drink sweet water woe oh, that day to the deniers to the deniers of hereafter to the deniers of resurrection to the deniers of jannah to the deniers of hell of hell fire they will be told proceed proceed to that which you used to deny proceed to a shadow of smoke having three columns but having no cool shade and availing not against the flame indeed it throws sparks what the fire of hell it throws sparks as huge as fortresses as if they were yellowish or black camels woe oh, that day to the deniers who denied despite having well to feed those who were hungry who denied despite riches and gold to to provide drinks to those who were thirsty who denied despite having all the money in the world to to clothe those who were not having clothes who denied who denied to obey the sunnahs of prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam this is a day they will not speak 
nor will it be permitted for them to make an excuse. Woe that day to the deniers. This is the day of judgment. We will have assembled you and the former people. So if you have a plan, then plan against me. Woe that day to the deniers. Indeed, the righteous will be among the shades and springs and fruits from whatever they desire. Being told, eat and drink in satisfaction for what you used to do because they did not deny to do pious and righteous acts. Indeed, we thus reward the doers of good. Woe that day to the deniers. O oh, disbelievers, eat and enjoy yourselves a little. Indeed, you are the criminals. Woe that day to the deniers. When it is said to them, bow in the prayer, they do not bow. Woe that day to the deniers, then in what statement after the Quran will they believe? Let's announce our faith and belief. Rabbana innana amanna. Rabbana innana amanna. Faghfir lana zanubana vakina azab nar. Vakina azab al hashri. Vakina azab al mizan. Vakina azab al nar. Ya hayu ya qayyum bi rahmatika nastaghis rabbi awzi'ni an ashkura ni'mata qallati an'amta alayya wa ala walidayya wa an a'mala salihan tarzuahu wa adkhilni bi rahmatika fi ibadika as-salihin fatiru as-samawati wal ard anta waliyyi fi dunya wal akhira tawaffani musliman wa alhiqni bis-salihin Sura an naba The Surah was revealed in Makkah. It has two stanzas, 40 verses. It is the 78th by the order of arrangement and 80th by the order of revolution. The Surah derives its name from the word an naba in the second verse, where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is giving the big news of the day of resurrection. Uh, as uh, far as the period of revolution is concerned, uh, it was uh, revealed in the same period as Surah al qayama Surah an naziyat that is in the earliest period of Makkah. The basic theme and the subject matter of the Surah is uh, same as that of Surah al mursalat that is the affirmation of the day of resurrection and to warn the people of the consequences of failure of the believing and also failure to prepare for the life hereafter. Because um, when Prophet وسلم, he first he started to preach Islam in Mecca, then the basic message he was conveying to all was basically on the oneness of Allah and not to associate any partners with Allah. And the second was that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had appointed Prophet وسلم, as his messengers. And the third was that this world uh, will come to an end one day and there another world will be established when all the former and the later generations, they will be resurrected and with the same bodies in which they had lived and they had worked and they will be called for account of their beliefs and their deeds. So the first thing was highly unpleasant for the people of Mecca. In any case, they did believe in the existence of Allah, but they had created other deities, like they had 360 idols in Haram itself. So this is, they believe that uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala was the supreme sustainer, the creator, and he was the provider. But actually what they were not wanting to give up was their belief on their, or their faith on the idols. And they considered them as deities with Allah. And for the second thing, believing in the prophethood of Prophet sallallahu was also, they were finding it difficult. Despite the fact that Prophet sallallahu had been with them for the last 40 years, and they had been seeing his uh, morals and his ethics and his um, code of life, but still they were finding it very difficult to accept him as the messenger of Allah. And the third thing, uh, the concept of hereafter and accountability, because of their sinful manner of life, accepting the concept of accountability of the hereafter, obviously it was very difficult for them to accept it and to leave their sinful manner of life. That is why in these earlier surahs, which were revealed in Makkah, the basic three concepts have been repeated over and over again in different manners in these verses of 
um, the last uh, juz of Quran. And uh, similarly, we um, I would want to repeat that whenever Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala conveys a concept or gives a commandment, the general manner of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the verses of Quran is that he gives examples. He gives examples from ourselves, from our beings, and then from all around us, that is from creations of the universe, gives us examples to make us understand. And then he gives and quotes example from people or from nations of the past who were told the same thing. And if they fail to believe what torment fell them and how were they punished. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala also quotes uh, gives us narrations from the future. That is, all those people who have been told, who accept it, how will they be rewarded? And those who fail to accept and have believed, what will be their punishment on the day of judgment? So this is a general uh, method which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala adopts throughout in the verses of Quran. And this is what we are generally coming across in these verses of the last Jews of Quran also. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. About what are they asking one another about the great news? The great news is the biggest happening of the universe, the day of resurrection, about the great news that over which they are in disagreement. No, they are going to know. Then no, they are going to know. Have we not made the earth as a resting place and the mountains as stakes? And we created you in pairs and made your sleep a means for rest and made the night as a clothing and made the day for livelihood and constructed above you seven strong heavens and made therein a burning lamp and sent down from the rain clouds pouring water that we may bring forth thereby grain and vegetation and gardens of entwined growth. Indeed, the day of judgment is an appointed time. So for Allah, who could do all that, who, could, who has created, who controls, who organizes, and who is the sovereign master over all what has been mentioned, mentioned in the above verses, obviously for him, creating, and bringing a day of judgment, it is no, it's no difficult. It is an appointed time, the day of the horn, the day the horn is blown and you will come forth in multitudes and the heaven is opened and will become gateways and the mountains are removed and will be but a mirage. Indeed, the hell has been lying in wait for the transgressors, a place of return in which they will remain for ages unending they will not taste therein any coolness or drink except scalding water and foul parallance rabbana srif anna azaba jahannam inna azabaha kana gharama why will they be given all this this will be an appropriate recompense indeed they were not and they were not expecting an account and denied our verses with a denial, but all the things we have enumerated in writing. So taste the penalty and never will we increase you except in torment. Indeed, for the righteous is attainment, gardens and grape wines and full breasted companions of equal age and a full cup. No ill speech will they hear therein or any falsehood as a reward from your Lord, a generous gift made due by account from the Lord of the heavens and the earth and whatever is between them, the most merciful, they possess not from him authority for speech. The day that the spirit and the angels will stand in rows, they will not speak except they will not speak except for one whom the most merciful permits and he will say what is correct. That is the true day, so he who wills may take to his Lord a way of return. Indeed, we have warned you of a near punishment on the day when a man will observe what his hands have put forth, and the disbelievers will say, 
oh, I wish I was, a, I would dust. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala here has called in verse number 39, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has called as the day of resurrection as Yawmul Haq, the true day, the day of truth. Why has the day of judgment or the day of recompense called as the day of truth or the day or the true day is that the arrival of the day is a truth. Secondly, the happenings narrated about the day of resurrection, they are all based on truth. The day, the third thing is the day when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will show and will also prove the truth which was explained about the day in the Quran and in the Hadith. The fourth reason which commentators explain is that it will be a day when when the fair and the true decision, truthful decisions will be made. And another reason which is given as that those following the truth will be given reward and those who had denied the true messages, teachings and commandments of the of the Quran, not regarding it as a truth, but taking it as false. And they had been falsifying also, they will be given their true punishments. Allahumma anis wahshati hashri. Allahumma anis wahshati hashri. And in the verse number 40, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions that all the disbelievers who had believed, who had disbelieved in the truth of this Yomul Haq, they will be they will be regretful. Remember, regret itself is a torment of hellfire. And it is very, very frequently mentioned in Quran. Like the inmates of hell, they they will say that I wish I had offered salah. I wish, I wish I had prostrated. I wish I had made charity. I wish I had not taken shaitan as my friend. I wish I had not taken such and such as my friend. I wish I had followed the, the messages uh, the messages conveyed to us by Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So regret itself will be one of the greatest torments of, for the people of hellfire. رَبَّنَا أَسْرِفْ أَنَّا أَزَابَ جَهَنُّمْ إِنَّا أَزَابَهَا كَانَا غَرَامًا إِنَّا هَسَاد مُسْتَقَرٌ وَمَقَامًا Surah An-Naziyat The surah we learn is, uh, this has been revealed in Makkah. It has two stanzas with 46 verses and 79 by the order of arrangement and 81st by the order of revolution. It derives its name from one Naziyat, with which the surah opens and the period of revolution it has been has uh, we learned by a tradition from Hazrat Abdullah bin Abbas radiallahu ta'ala and who that surah was sent down after surah an naba that is in the earliest period of Makkah regarding the theme and the basic subject matter is the main uh, topic of the surah is the affirmation of resurrection and the life hereafter. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has very strictly and aggressively in the short brief verses of the surah, Allah has warned against the consequences of all those who are failing or refusing to believe in the prophethood of Prophet sallallahu the surah opens with the oaths sworn by the angels who take the soul at death and those who hasten to carry out Allah's commands and those who conduct the affairs of the universe according to the will of Allah. And they do all this, why? To assure, Allah has sworn all this, why? To assure that the resurrection will certainly come pass and the second life hereafter will certainly take place. Because Allah swears by all these activities of the angels to prove that for the angels who are <clears throat> who've been employed to pluck out the soul today, they can also be employed to restore the soul tomorrow. And the angels who promptly they execute Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's commands and conduct the affairs of the universe today, they will, they are very much by the order of Allah, they will be able to upset the orders of the universe tomorrow. 
capsule, Allah has quoted the uh, Allah has sworn by the angels to prove that the that the existence and the creation of the day of judgment is no big deal for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And similarly, after this, the people have been to, uh, told in the verses of the surah that this work of, uh, of the day of resurrection, which you regard as absolutely impossible, is not difficult for Allah, for, for which he may have to make very lengthy preparations. It will be just like what? It will be kun fayakun. It will say, Allah will say happen and it will happen. And then in the next few verses, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has related the story of uh, Prophet Musa alayhi salam and Pharaoh, that what fate Pharaoh made in consequence when he was, he was refusing to believe in the prophethood and in the messages which were being conveyed to him by Hazrat Musa alayhi salam. And this is as a warning to the people of Makkah that if you do not learn any lesson and you do not change your ways the way you are behaving with Prophet sallallahu alayhi salam, then you will be punished in a similar manner also. And then in verses from 27 to 33, there have been arguments again for hereafter and life after death. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has made questions uh, like, is your resurrection a more difficult task or the creation of the huge universe, which has been spent, which has been uh, spread to infinite distances and your creation cannot be difficult for Allah for whom it was an easy task. And in the conclusion, the question of the disbelievers of Mecca as to when resurrection will take place has been answered, telling them that the knowledge of the time of its occurrence rests with Allah alone. And uh, the messenger is there only to give you warnings that it certainly will, surely will come and you need to make preparations for it and you need to believe in it. <coughs> Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Wanna zi'ati arkan. Wanna shi'ati nashtan. Wasa bihati sabhan. Fasa bihati sabhan. Fal mudabbi rati amran. Allah says, by those angels who extract with violence. This is what we learn the angels, the death angel removing the taking out the soul from the body of a person who was wicked, who was evil, who was disobedient. Because we learn from the words of uh, the Hadith that when the death angel approaches uh, a disbeliever at the time of death, then the, the soul sticks to the body and the death angel has to take it out like Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi is given a simile, takes it out so harshly and extracts it with such a harsh violence as if, give an example, as if the wool, it sticks and it clings to the thorny, the, a wet piece of wool or a wet ball of wool or cotton. It, it clings to a bush of thorny, a thorny bush also. So, and there, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala then says, and by those who remove with ease, this is for what? This is the death angel taking out the soul of a believer, of a pious person at the time of death, which Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam has given an example. Will the soul of a believer will come out of the body so easily after the order of the death angel, like as if any one of you opens the lid of a bottle of a scent of a, or a perfume and the perfume comes out easily. Allahumma a'inni ala ghamaratil maut wa sakaratil maut. And by those who glide as if swimming and those who race each other in a race for what? For obedience of Allah, to conduct and carry out the orders of Allah. And those who arrange each, uh, each matter and on the day, the blast of the horn will convulse creation. They will follow it, the subsequent one. Hearts that day will tremble. Their eyes will be humbled. They are presently saying, Will we indeed be returned to our former state of life? Even if we should be decayed bones, they say that then would be a losing return. Indeed, it will be but one shout and suddenly they will be alert upon the earth's surface. Has they reached you the story of Musa salam, when his Lord called to him in the sacred valley of Tuwa? Go to Pharaoh. Indeed, he has transgressed and said to him, 
and say to him, would you be willing to purify yourself and let me guide you to your Lord so you would fear him? And he showed him the greatest signs, but Pharaoh denied and disobeyed. Then he turned his back, striving, and he gathered his people and called out and said, I am your most exalted Lord. So Allah seized him in exemplary punishment for the last and the first transgression. Indeed, and that is a warning for whoever would fear Allah. Are you more difficult in creation or is the heaven Allah constructed it? He raised its ceiling and proportioned it and he darkened its night and extracted its brightness. And after that, he spread the earth. He extracted from it its water and its pasture and the mountains he set firmly as provisions for you and your grazing livestock. But when there comes the great overwhelming calamity, the day when man will remember that for which he strove and hell will be exposed for all those who see. So as for he who transgressed and preferred the life of the world, then indeed hell fire will be his refuge. But as for he who feared the position of his Lord and prevented the soul from unlawful inclination, then indeed paradise will be his refuge. They ask you about the hour when it is its arrival. In what position are you that you should mention it? To your Lord is its finality. You are only a honor for those who fear it will be on the day they see it as though they had not remained in the world except for an afternoon or a morning thereof. <coughs> so here Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the last verse highlights to us that all those on the day of resurrection would consider that they've been in this worldly life, which is a part of the day explains how important and how how unimportant this worldly life is as compared to the life hereafter. That is why exactly Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam has explained that this worldly life has has no importance whatsoever in the light, in the sight of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala saying that this worldly life is not even is less important to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala even less important than the than the wing of a mosquito and prophet sallallahu has given an example of the life of this world as compared to the life of hereafter saying that if someone someone of you dips his finger in an ocean and takes it out then the example of the water sticking to the finger what the example of the water sticking to the finger as compared to the water of the sea of the ocean is similar is the example of this worldly life as compared to the life hereafter. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us all realize this and set our priorities and preferences in life accordingly and help us all develop the fear of hereafter and help us all be one of those lucky ones who are wise enough to prepare for our eternal abode. Surah Abasa. Revealed in Mecca, having 42 verses, two stanzas, 80th by the order of arrangement and 24th by the order of revolution. The surah has been uh, named after the word Abasa with which it opens. And the period of revolution is uh, almost in the beginning of Mecca. And uh, we uh, learn uh, an incident after which the surah was basically revealed. And the occasion was that Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he was sitting uh, in an assembly and there were people, uh, they were the leaders of Quraysh like Utba, Shreba, Abu Jahl, Umayyah bin Khalaf, Ubay bin Khalaf. They were the bitterest enemies of uh, Islam. And they were in an assembly sitting around Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was... <coughs> They were asking about the teachings of Islam and Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was trying to 
persuade them to accept Islam. And obviously he was very desperate because he was desirous that if these leaders of Quraysh, they embrace Islam and they become supportive for Islam, this will be a very big source of power. And this will be a source of uh, great success for the Muslims. So Prophet was uh, very keenly trying to convince them that uh, they are passed by a companion, a blind companion, Hazrat Abdullah bin Umm Maktoum. And he saw that Prophet was most probably trying to tell something about the Quran or teaching something about Islam or about religion. So he was so keen that we learn from different traditions that he started saying that, O Messenger of Allah, teach me the knowledge that Allah has taught you. Or there are other things, other places where we learn that he was saying that, O Prophet also teach me the path to Jannah. And he came towards Prophet Sallallahu but we realized that Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, who was earnestly engaged in trying to persuade the leaders, he somehow disliked the interruption and he ignored him Obviously, taking him as a sincere companion, Prophet Sallallahu knew that he was already a senior, a sincere companion. So he, for the time being, seemed to ignore him and he somehow also disliked and he just ignored and he did not answer him back. So there it was that these verses of Quran, these verses of Surah Abasa, they were revealed like a full about 15 of verses of Surah Abasa were revealed. Abasa, Abasa wa tawalla and ja'ahul ahma, that you frowned and you turned away your face because there came up to you a blind man. So there it was that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala did not uh, like this behavior and disapproved of this behavior and Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa behavior was corrected. So what do we learn from here? What we learn from here, number one, is the excellence is the excellence of the companions of prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam this companion this blind uh, this blind companion of prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam has abdullah bin umay maktoum he was he was the companion of prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam for whom twice were the verses of surah of quran revealed once we we've already learned that in surah nisa the words were added to the to the verse of Surah Nisa. And this is the first time where verse was revealed. Surah Abasa was the first time when the verse of Quran was revealed for him. And Surah Nisa, it was revealed in Medina after a battle when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had commented and he had supplicated for the words and orders of Allah to be revised for him. So this is the excellence of the companions of Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. But little do we know about them. He was the companion which Allah mentioned him twice in Quran and Prophet ﷺ, whenever he used to leave Medina for an expedition or for any other process, he used to leave Hazrat Abdullah bin Umm Maktoum as a vice behind him. And then he was the he was the second muazzin of uh, the Masjid al Nabi also. And all the companions of Prophet ﷺ used to highly respect Hazrat Abdullah bin Umm Maktoum also. But little do we know about them. If you go around yourself and you ask people to analyze statistically how much, how much all those Muslims of Ummah know about these companions, these righteous companions of Prophet Wasallam, those who were labeled as Radiallahu Anhum wa Radu An in the Quran, and those are no doubt the An Amta Alayhim mentioned in Surah Al Fatiha. Little do we know about them. Just go around and ask people that who was the companion, name the companion about whom. Twice when the verses of Quran were revealed and you will find out that hardly like not even 5% of people, literate people in our society, I'm not talking about the illiterate people, the uneducated class of the society, I'm not talking about that. You will realize that even the literate people, the well-read people, the intelligent Shia of the society of Muslims will not be knowing the name of Hazrat Abdullah bin Umm Maktoum. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us connect with the stories and with the lives of these companions and to learn them ourselves and to and then to pass them on to all those around, especially to our children and to our families, so that they can learn how these Ananta and Lehim behaved and becomes easy for us to follow them and to follow the path to Jannah also. And similarly, we can understand from these verses that how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala appreciates, 
appreciates the sincerity of the believers and how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala likes the desire to gain knowledge and to learn the path of guidance and how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala appreciates the behavior and the sincerity of the companions or of a believer when he is desirous of learning the do's and don'ts of Allah to enter to uh, to enter to Jannah. And that is exactly what Prophet Sallallahu has also been instructed in Quran, Qul Rabbi Zidni Ilma. So Rabbi Zidni Ilma is a behavior which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala likes for all the believers. And this is what we need to adopt. And then uh, we uh, also understand the importance of good manners and uh, good uh, behavior with the with all those around us and with the fellow beings around us because you know here prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam he just ignored hazrat abdullah and he was like slightly uh, he did not answer back and despite the fact that he had sincere and genuine reason for that he was just not he was just not exhibiting uh, ill manner out of uh, out of a bad temperament. No, it, he had his good proper reasons for being doing that, but still ignoring a fellow being and being slightly slightly rude was disliked. So this is the importance of good manners in Islam. Also, Allahumma inni a'uzu bika mimukirat al akhlaq. Allah Subhanahu wa Taala help us all help us all correct and improve our manners also. And rather than just making an outwardly improvement in our appearances as Muslims, help us reform our inner selves, our ethics, our morals, and our behavior and our manners also. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Abaza wa tawalla anja'ahul a'ma. وَمَا يُدْرِيكَ لَعَلَّهُ يَزَّكَّ أَوْ يَزَّكَّرُ فَتَنْفَعُهُ الزِّكْرَ The Prophet frowned and turned away because there came to him the blind man interrupting. But what, but what would make you perceive that perhaps he might be purified or be reminded and the remembrance would benefit him? For he who thinks himself without need, to him you give attention, and not upon you is any blame if he will not be purified. But as for he who comes to you striving for knowledge while he fears Allah, from him you are distracted. No, indeed, these verses are a reminder for whoever wills may remember it. It is recorded in honored sheets exalted and purified, carried by the hands of messenger angels, noble and dutiful. So in these verses 12 to 13, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is uh, mentioning the respect and regard and the position of Quran, the excellence of Quran. And the excellence of Quran is what has been explained in the tradition as the best of you is he who, who reads the Quran and who teaches it to others. So this is the excellence of Quran, that it is a book which is respected and regarded. And similarly, Prophet Sallallahu has also been reported to say that the book of the creator has the same supremacy over the book of people, just like the creator are the almighty Allah has over his creations. So how do we need to respect and how do we need to take a, a regard the owner of Quran is a few tips. Number one, we should not stack up books on, um, on top of the Quran. Like when we're putting uh, other books, we can stack them up on above one above the other, but we should not put anything or any other book on the Quran. And then it should not be used like as a clipboard that we put it underneath and we put a paper on top of it and we start writing. We, no, Quran will not be used as a clipboard. And then while we are reading or we are reciting the Quran in our Quran sessions also, then we, are, we should just write what is 
reference to the Quran itself. Like we might jot down our notes on the sides of uh, the paper, or we might write down the words of a hadith, which are like our pertinent notes for the session, but not anything else other than relevant to the teachings of Quran and Hadith, like putting down a telephone number here. No, it is not a notebook. And we should not scribble and wanting things on as, um, as a normal copy or as a normal notebook. And then we should not place the Quran at a place or anything like on which we put our feet or the place where we sit like on our chairs, on our sofas. This is again the respect of Quran. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, let us respect the Quran also in our um, in our outwardly behaviors and most of all bless us with the love and with the respect and regard of the teachings of Quran and help us all adopt the commandments of uh, of Quran till our last <clears throat> till our last breath. Cursed is the man! How disbelieving is he! From what substance did he create him? From a sperm drop, he created him and destined for him. And then he eased the way for him. And then he caused his death and provides a grave for him. Then when he wills, he will resurrect him. No, man has not yet accomplished what he commanded him. Then let mankind look at his food, how we poured down water in torrents. Then we broke open the earth, splitting it with sprouts and caused to grow within it grain and grapes and herbage and olives and palm trees and gardens of dense shrubbery and fruit and grass as the enjoyments for you and your grazing livestock. And when, when there comes the deafening blast on the day a man will flee from his brother and his mother and his father and his wife and his children and for every man that day will be a matter adequate for him. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is explaining here that all the near and dear and beloved ones for whom to please whom we start displeasing Allah, to obey whom we start disobeying Allah, to, to, to worry when we get worried about not annoying them, we start annoying Allah. When we get upset that how will we answer their questions, we stop worrying about how we are going to answer the questions, uh, answer the questions of Allah. All these near and dear ones, the person on the day of judgment will flee from all of them. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, help us, help us establish the correct priorities and preferences of love in our life. Remember, for believers, the top most loved one has to be whom? Wallazina Amanu Ashadduhu Balillah. Allahuma inni asaluka hubbaka wa hubba me yu hibbuka wa amala lazi yu baliguni hubbaka. Some faces that day will be bright. Which faces will be bright? They will be laughing, rejoicing at the good news. Which faces will be bright? Which faces will be shining? They will be joyful. They will be rejoicing. Those who, who, were, who, who were a source of happiness and joy to others, who used to give joy and happiness and pleasure between the poor, between the needy, the sick and the hungry, who used to, who used to distribute laughters among their, among their people surrounding them and who used to wipe off the tears of others. Other faces that day will have upon them dust, blackness will cover them. Those are the disbelievers, the wicked ones, the people who will have dark, dusty faces. They will be in a state of sorrow and grief on the day of judgment will be those who were a source of stress, who were a source of anxiety and sorrow for other bondsmen, who, who dishonored, who disrespected others, who were who were a source of who, who were a source of who were a source to make others cry and weep in pain and agony and misery allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us stay back from all these activities and help us stay back from all forms of oppressions and harsh and hard heartedness allahumma inni a'udhu bika min munkirat al akhlaq wal a'mal wal ahwa'i wal adwa Surah 
Surah at taqwir is a surah which was revealed in Mecca, having 29 verses, 81st by the order of arrangement and 7th by the order of revolution. And uh, it derives its name from the word Quvirat in the first word, uh, in the first verse, because uh, taqwir means what? Taqwir is a, a verb in the past tense, and it means uh, that which is folded up. To wrap up something and to fold up something is what we mean by taqwir. And this refers to uh, what will be the sun and the moon and all the creations. They will be wrapped up and they will be folded up. And the period of revolution is, it is it was revealed in the earliest period of of Mecca and the subject matter of the surah is basically two themes hereafter and uh, the belief on the prophethood of Prophet Sallallahu in the first six verses the first stage of resurrection has been mentioned where um, Allah has uh, mentioned when the sun will lose its light and the stars will scatter and the mountains will be uprooted and dispersed and people will be heedless of their dearest positions the beasts of the jungles will be stupefied and they will be gathered together and the seas will boil up. And then the next seven verses, the second stage of the day of resurrection, they have been, they, uh, that has been explained that how the souls will be reunited with their bodies and, this, and the records will be laid open and people will be called to account for their crimes and the heaven will be unveiled and the hells and the heavens will be brought into full view. And uh, thus the people will be uh, given their rewards and punishments, announcements will be made for that. And after this, um, in the second part of uh, the surah, the concept of the prophethood of Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam has been taken up. That whatever Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is presenting to you is not the bragging of an insane person, nor it is an evil suggestion which has been inspired by shaitan, but it is what? It is the word of a noble, exalted, trustworthy messenger who has been sent by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And um, it's also been explained that Prophet Sallallahu has seen with his own eyes in the bright horizon of the clear sky, has that the Jibrail alayhi salam, the, uh, the angel who used to bring the revolutions and all this messages and the divine uh, guidance to Prophet Sallallahu So this is the basic uh, summary of the surah. Now relating to this summary, when we go across the verses, inshallah, we'll be able to understand the whole verses. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says here, <coughs> Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim, is a shamsu quvirat wa is a nujumu qadarat wa is al jibalu suyirat وعز العشار عدلت وعز الوحوش حشرت وعز البهار سجرت وعز النفوس زوجت Allah says, when the sun is wrapped up in darkness and when the stars fall dispersing and when the mountains are removed and when the full term she camels are neglected. This is what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala explains this to explain the state of chaos and panic and fear on the day of judgment when the horn is blown. This is the first stage of the day of resurrection that people will not be mindful of even their most precious personal commodities and their wealthy and their wealth and their riches like camels. Allah here is mentioning the full term she camels because you know the people of Arabs they they were for them camels were something very important they used them for means of transport and for many other things they were using camels for so camels was something which were very important and precious and dear to them and above all was a she camel and a she camel which was full term because obviously it was some time it was a very sensitive time for her and it was a it was a very delicate time for her and her life was also at risk and she was also endangered and plus there was also hope of her giving birth to another camel so it was like what it was like a very precious commodity a full term she camel quoting that in this verse indicates what a precious most commodity of a person they all will be what they will be neglecting all those when the horn will be blown 
And when the wild beasts are gathered, this means what? That all the enemies, all the enemies, the people who were enemies to one another, and they were daggers drawn with each other, they will become, they will become friends with each other. So this is it. This is it. All these enmities, all these grievances and grudges are till when? We know even in this worldly life, we know it is till the time of death or will be till when? Till the day of resurrection. Connect with each other and all those who are, who have any grudges or who are like split away from each other, breaking the bonds of kith and kin. Remember, Prophet ﷺ has told all of us, all those who have broken the relations of kin, who have severed the relations of kith and kin, they will not enter Jannah. And then how, how long can we keep these grudges and grievances in our hearts? Obviously, till the soul departs. So forgive everybody and ask for forgiveness and just just reunite among yourselves. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, help us clear our souls from all forms of harsh and hard-hearted feelings we have for those around ourselves. And when the seas are filled with flame and when the souls are feared and when the girl who was buried alive is asked for what sin she was killed. What is this being said? Because you know, in, in the Arabs in those days, before the advent of Islam and even during the prophethood of Prophet Sallallahu in the initial period before the teachings of Quran and Hadith had spread, in those periods, they, they, was, they used to dislike their daughters and there were barbaric customs of burying their female in, infants alive. This was very prevalent in the ancient Arabs. And the reason, basic reasons were economic constraints because they thought that they, these daughters, these female offsprings, they were just feeding mouths and they were not earning hands. So after raising them, they will go across and they will have to face economic constraints. And secondly, they, were, they used to think that uh, tribes attacking them will take their, uh, their, their, their daughters and they will make slave girls out of them. And this will be dishonoring in, uh, for all of them. And rather than protecting them as brave uh, fathers or, or brothers, and looking after their female folk, they used to kill their daughters. And thirdly, they thought that when they will get uh, old and they will get married, then the husbands, husbands, they will be disrespectful for them and they might have to, they might have to humble down in front of the son-in-law. So for these simple reasons, they used to just simply, they used to bury off their female infants. And you know what? The, the custom in uh, those days was that when a woman used to conceive and she used to get pregnant, the husband used to ask her to, uh, a, a child pit was dig. And she was told that if a girl was born, she was to bury her herself. And then uh, if the woman being the mother failed to do that, there were many incidents which were narrated by the companions, how they confessed, how they confessed in front of Prophet Sallallahu that they had buried their daughters alive. And um, uh, we learn of so many stories in the traditions. Uh, there was a person who came to Prophet Sallallahu and he told, that he had a daughter who was so much attached to him. And uh, he told that when I used to call her, she would come running to me and she would hug me. And one day I called her and I took her out with me. And on the way I came across a well and I held her by her hand and I pushed her into the well. And uh, she kept on crying out and I left her there in the well. And I went away hard hearted. I was not responding to what I heard. And the last voices which I heard was she was crying out, Oh, Father, Oh, Father. And he was crying and he was weeping. And Prophet Sallallahu was crying also. And the companion said, That, oh man, you've grieved Prophet Sallallahu And Prophet Sallallahu said, That do not stop him. Do not stop him. And then Prophet Sallallahu wept so bitterly that his beard also became wet with his tears. And then Prophet ﷺ said to that man that Allah has forgiven, forgiven you. You seek repentance and you seek forgiveness for your sins. So, so this was a norm. This was a norm in the Arab society. And then there was a companion who came to Prophet ﷺ and he said, 
that, O oh, Messenger of Allah, this was while he accepted Islam. He said that, O oh, Messenger of Allah, during the days of ignorance, I have had some good deeds and some good works also among which one is that I have saved 360 girls from being buried alive. I gave two camels each as a ransom to save their lives. And shall I get any reward for this? Prophet said, yes, there is a reward for you. And it is this that Allah has blessed you with Islam. So this was a norm. And uh, then there were the teachings of Prophet وسلم, which reformed this society. As Prophet وسلم, has been reported in Bukhari and Muslim that he said that a person who is put to trial because the birth of a daughter and then he treats him, then he treats her generously, then the daughter will become a means for a rescue of hellfire. And similarly, Prophet وسلم, said he's been reported in a true tradition that he said that one who brought up three daughters or sisters and taught them good manners and treated them with kindness until they became self-sufficient, then Allah will make paradise obligatory for him. And then a person asked that, what about the person who has two daughters? Uh, Prophet said the same for two daughters. And Ibn Abbas said that if, Prophet, if he had been asked, if people had asked him about one daughter, he would have given the same answer. And similarly, Prophet has also informed all of us that um, if uh, a person has a daughter born to him and he does not bury her alive, nor keeps her in disgrace, nor prefers his sons to her, nor prefers his sons to her, Allah will admit him to Jannah. Then another, another tradition is, um, he says that the one who has three daughters born to him, and he is patient over them and clothes them according to his means. And then they become a means of rescue for him for hellfire. Similarly, there are many other traditions in which Prophet ﷺ has promised that the person will be with Prophet ﷺ like he joined his two fingers. So this is the reward of looking after the daughters. And uh, this is the punishment for all those people of Mecca who used to bury their daughters alive. And Allah is saying here that they will be asked and they will be held accountable on the day of judgment. And when the pages are made public and when the sky is stripped away and when hellfire is set ablaze and when the paradise is brought near, a soul will then know what it has brought with it. So I swear by the retreating stars that those that run their courses and disappear and by the night as it closes on and by the dawn when it breathes that indeed the quran is a word conveyed by a noble messenger who is possessed of power and with the owner of the throne secure in position obeyed there in the heavens and trustworthy and your companion is not at all insane. And he has already seen Hazrat Jibreel alayhi salam in the clear horizon. And Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam is not a withholder of knowledge of the unseen. And the Quran is not the word of a devil expelled from the heavens. So where are you going? It is not except a reminder to the world for whoever wills among you to take a right course. And you do not will. And you do not will except that Allah wills, Lord of the worlds. Allahumma inni as'aluka al-huda wa tuqa wal afafa wal ghina. Surah al-Infitwar. Maki uh, Surah with 19 verses and one stanza, 82nd by the order of arrangement and 82nd by the order of revolution. Also, the name is derived from the initial, the first or the word of Anfatarat in the first verse. Anfatar means what? To split. To split something, so the surah, because it starts with the mentioning of the splitting of the skies. So that is why it has been known as surah and fitar. And we learn from a tradition that Prophet Sallallahu has been reported that he said that anyone of you who wants to see the day of judgment with his eyes, 
Any one of you who wants to see the day of judgment with his own eyes should read what the verses of Surah al infitar Surah at taqwir and uh, Surah al inshiqaq So these three surahs, the verses of these three surahs, they very openly and very clear cut short verses, they narrate the events on the day of resurrection. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala here says, Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim, is a shamsun fatarat, wa is al kava kibun tasarat, wa is al biharu fujirat, wa is al kaburu borsirat, alimat nafsumma kodamat wa ahorat. Ya ayuhal in sanuma or rakabi robbikal kareem. And when the sky breaks apart, and when the stars fall scattering, and when the seas are erupted, and when the contents of the graves are scattered, and the soul will then know what it has put forth and kept back. O oh, mankind, what has deceived you concerning your Lord, the generous, who created you, proportioned you, and balanced you in whatever form he willed, and he has assembled you? No, but you deny the recompense. Indeed, appointed over you are keepers, noble and recording they know what you do. Indeed, the righteous will be in pleasure. Indeed, the wicked will be in hellfire. They will enter to burn therein on the day of recompense. Allahumma ajirna mina nar, rabbibni li indaka baitan fil jannah. And never, and never their form will they be absent. And what can make you know what is the day of recompense? Then what can make you know what is the day of recompense? It is the day when a soul will not possess for another soul power to do a thing and the command that day is entirely with Allah. All the bondsmen will be, will be presented in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and all of us, each one of us, each soul created and sent to the earth as a human being, as a superior being or jinn will be, will be raised in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala confronting Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he on his throne saying out what? This verse of Quran is the why one of the verses most being feared of, we need to fear of, we standing all by ourselves in the court of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, nobody in front of us or behind us to support us, to support us, to console us, to help us, to guide us, and, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala telling us that you've come, come all by yourself and you've left all behind. And Prophet is informed, has informed all of us that no soul will budge an inch. No soul, no person on the day of judgment will budge an inch until and unless a person will answer, answer five questions. How did you spend the days of your youth? What did you see? What did you hear? What did you look at? How did you talk? How did you walk? How did you dress up? Okay, fine. The next question, how did you spend the rest of the years of your life when you had gained wisdom, when you had gained experiences of life, when you were more mature, when you were more knowledgeable, how did you spend the rest of the years of your life? Somebody granted 80, somebody granted 70 years. How did you spend the rest of your years of your life? The third question, how did you earn your livelihood, your wealth, your riches, your gold, your properties? How did you earn them? Lawful, unlawful? Legal, illegal, permitted, haram, halal. The fourth question, how did you spend your earnings? Demonstration, exhibition, riya, wastefulness, extravagance, within or without the limits of Allah. And then the last but not the least, the knowledge which you were given or blessed by Allah. How much did you act upon the knowledge you were blessed by Allah? Allahumma anfa'ni bima allamtani wa'allimni ma yanfa'ni wa zidni ilma.